and you were live. All right. Um, thanks, uh, David, and uh, welcome everyone to Hyperledger Bevel Workshop. Um, this session is of three hours and uh, we'll be demonstrating and discussing the deployment of Hyperledger Fabric on Kubernetes using Bevel and uh, the newly added uh, Bevel Operator Fabric. Um, the addition or basically the integration of Bevel Operator Fabric has been an important milestone for us as it kind of introduces the Kubernetes um, operators to achieve uh, DLT automation and deployment. Um, so throughout the uh, workshop, uh, you can, as David already pointed, you can feel free to ask questions and also use our Discord uh, channel um, and then uh, just have have that open. So we'll be posting out uh, links and uh, code snippets to help you with the uh, workshop. With that, uh, let me um, let's have some introduction from uh, the speakers for the session. Yep, um, we have uh, David Vio. Uh, David, uh, off to you for uh, just a quick introduction. Yeah. So thank you everyone for coming. I'm David Viejo. I'm, I'm the CEO of Comfort Software, which uh, helps companies uh, run. A Hyperlay fabric networks and complete Hyperlay fabric projects. And I'm the main, uh, one of the main contributors to the Bevel operator fabric, which helps helps to set up a network in way less time than the traditional way, you know, on Kubernetes only. Yep. Thank you, David. Uh, we have Shonak. Shonak, uh, quick introduction. Hello. Hi, hi everyone. Yes, yeah, Donna Croy. I'm joining from Manchester. Uh, I work uh, of, uh, for Accenture and uh, the technical product owner of the whole Hyperledger Bevel. Uh, I used to work for other companies like Capgemini and Infosys in my earlier days. And uh, that's my LinkedIn and uh, my Twitter handle. Uh, yeah, I mainly work as, as a distributor systems architect uh, right now in Accenture, uh, focusing on blockchain and Web3 technologies and also on the DevOps architecture. Yeah, over to you, Shubhajit. Thanks, Shanak. And uh, myself, Shubhajit Sarkar, I have um, around a decade of experience in software engineering and technology management. I work with Accenture's uh, Metaverse and Continuum Business Group. I'm also the maintainer of Hyperledger Bevel. Previous work experience was with Oracle and uh, SAP in Global Markets. You can find me on LinkedIn. My ID is ssarkar1604. Um, with that, I believe we can start with um, a Hyperledger Bevel. Um, Shanak, do you want to take that or uh, should I go ahead? You can do it. Yes, sorry. Right. Okay. Continue. Yep. So Hyperledger Bevel uh, is an automation framework for rapidly and consistently deploying production-ready DLT platform. It is not a DLT platform. It, it is a tool which does the automation. So there's always some confusion when, when people usually start with, but the important point to understand it, it is that it's a deployment tool. Um, so in a nutshell, if you see the uh, diagram here, uh, it, it, it kind of uh, starts with a developer or an um, operator configuring a single configuration file. Uh, we kind of refer it as a network YAML file. Um, and the that single configuration file holds the information of uh, the DLT platform or network that the user wants to deploy. Uh, for example, it would consist of different participating organization of the network, choice of DLT platforms that Bevel support, uh, the various configurations regarding, for example, the consensus mechanism of the platform in case of fabric, the number of orders or, um, or various other details like channels and chain code and so and so forth. So that single configuration is then consumed by the framework. And as you see on the uh, right hand side that uh, the framework then deploys the uh, platform of choice on to the uh, cloud provider of choice, which is abstracted through the Kubernetes. Now, uh, there are some guiding principles based on which Bevel has the Bevel solution has been created. Um, and then it majorly kind of uh, confronts to the reference architecture. We'll talk about uh, the reference architecture a bit in the later slides. 
the other guiding principles are the infrastructure independent part of it, which is done through the abstraction on Kubernetes, allowing it to be deployed on any um, uh, cloud provider or choice or on-prem infrastructure as well. Most of the components that uh, are in Bevel are modular in design, so you are free to kind of plug and play with them uh, and have your own desired uh, uh, components, basically. Uh, the Bevel solution is designed for security, so it uses best um, key management practices. Uh, none of the keys or credentials are stored in the source or configuration file. Uh, we'll also talk about these in uh, more details when we actually go through the uh, workshop demonstration. And uh, yeah, of course, it is open sourced uh, under Apache 2.0 licensed and it's contributed to Hyperledger. Moving to the next slide. So uh, key benefits of using Bevel. Um, I would say Bevel, uh, the key benefits of Bevel are uh, three aspects of it, which is firstly, uh, it provides a secure environment for your deployments um, by utilizing, as I was talking about, the best key practices of key management, which is available by default in the solution. Secondly, it is a truly scalable solution, uh, allowing the platforms uh, to be used for early POCs and pilots, and then uh, can be scaled up to run in a true production environment. Uh, third, uh, it is an accelerator that provides a proven architectural pattern for your DLT uh, deployment. Uh, with Bevel, you can create a dev or a test environment in under an hour and then also cut the development time from weeks to hours. Some of the other key benefits are, um, as you see here, the it's reference documentation. So we have extensively worked on, around our documentation. In fact, we are also uh, doing a mentorship program to enhance our documentation further. Um, the whole solution uses generic tools, which allows quick adoption uh, for the DevOps team. Uh, and also the automation can be easily plugged in with, with uh, the other uh, continuous integration tools, such as Jenkins or Git Actions, et cetera. The whole solution is kind of can be uh, is use containerized assets uh, and Bevel itself can also be run out. The source code can be run from a containerized environment. Um, and you'll also see while you do the workshop that most of the configurations as, as initially we talked about the network YAML file and also the other different uh, DLT um, network related configurations, you'll see that all of them are created as code. So all the policies and configurations can be, uh, can be configured through the, through the code itself. Now, um, moving to a bit of uh, the architecture that we initially referred as one of the guiding principles. Yeah, for so I can take this one, Sujit. Yep. Right? Yeah. Yep, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, so and just in case uh, uh, where people have joined now, uh, you can ask questions on the is better. You can ask here, but as, as David, uh, David said, uh, it's better to ask on the Discord channel because then the uh, channel is always there uh, because this uh, meeting chat will go away after the meeting is finished. Uh, okay, uh, so going coming back to the slides, uh, so we have the physical architecture straw man. So we talked about the uh, uh, Luigi talked about the the DLT reference architecture that is followed by Bevel, and so this is like the overall architecture. So this is a kind of a format from from the TOGAF. Uh, architecture actually, uh, but it is like an Accenture format which we use we internally. But this part of the the DLT reference architecture was also open sourced uh, before uh, Bevel was open sourced. Uh, so you can see like like on the on the left hand side of the screen, you have the security services and the DevOps services, which are more on the DevOps side architecture. And then the purple colors of the other boxes on the right side uh, denotes the runtime or the execution architecture. So uh, if we do right, um, sorry, bottom up first. So you have the infrastructure services uh, to as the, at the base. Uh, so Bevel uh, has, uh, you know, the cloud providers are there and then we use the container services and that's how we achieve uh, you know, more uh, uh, infrastructure agnosticity uh, because it's not tied to a specific cloud provider uh, because you're using Kubernetes. 
and we always use uh, the um, the managed kubernetes service uh, solutions provided by each of the uh, uh, each of the um, cloud providers so that you don't end up uh, spending time in managing the kubernetes itself rather than actually deploying uh, uh, dlt networks uh, then on top of that we have the distributed data platforms so at some point we had the distributed databases i think uh, no one has actually worked on this uh, yet <laughs> but it's still there but on the ledger side we we support all these so that means uh, from hyperledger fabric nd quorum besu and corda enterprise and open source uh, we support all of them then on the next layer where we integrate uh, which is includes the application integration as well as dlt integration in dlt integration we mainly use ambassador for most of the uh, uh, these two dlts but specifically for fabric we use uh, ha proxy uh, the other application integrations and are, are will be dependent on whatever application you are developing uh, on the DLT. And then, of course, you have the presentation services, which is mainly the front end. Uh, so that will, of course, definitely be uh, according to your application. So whatever is is basically has a picture here is provided by uh, by Bevel and the one those you can see in the green boxes uh, are are the prerequisites i mean it bevel does not do them you have to have them before you you are trying to use bevel on the security services uh, of course the main main is is the vault uh, which is uh, uh, should we see your uh, screen yeah uh, so is is vault which is the key management uh, where all the keys and certificates and even secrets are stored there uh, then all the policies are done by uh, in Git. Uh, the policies means like who has access and all that because we use GitOps, so all the policy management is happening uh, is, uh, is taken care of by Git. Uh, the other ones like IAM and certificate authorities and all the other things are determined by the project or, or kind of uh, or again will depend on the application uh, because you will, your application will have a different way to access the front end, for example. Uh, then coming to the DevOps services, if we again do bottom up, uh, we have the application lifecycle management, which is the delivery management. We inter ourselves use GitHub and read the docs. Uh, so all the documentation is on read the docs and uh, GitHub is our main uh, where we uh, do all the uh, all the uh, sprint management, sprint planning and, and release management. Uh, then on the build and uh, test artifact management, uh, we uh, we have Jenkins as well, which uh, we are we we have not used for a long time, but it's there. But we have now mainly moved on to GitHub Actions. So all the build uh, management, release management, uh, releases, actual releases happen via uh, GitHub Actions. Uh, all the sample codes are there uh, on on GitHub under the dot uh, dot GitHub folder uh you have the infrastructure as code uh, which is not part here because as i said uh, that the infrastructure the cloud infrastructure is is a prerequisite uh then you we have the kubernetes deploy uh, we use the we of course use helm um, helm mainly the helm operator and, and the flux operator uh, to do that which again uses helm uh, then Prometheus and Grafana is kind of it's still in the backlog. We have not uh, we the we need some help on there. So if we, here anyone is is uh, able to help on the issues which are related to deployment of Prometheus and Grafana for any of the uh, DLT networks, it would be great. Uh, then configuration management is via Ansible. Again, uh, we we uh, as we discuss our main configuration file is just one network YAML. We don't do the whole uh, management of servers via Ansible uh, because uh, it's this anyway on on separately done by the cloud provider, and we are using managed Kubernetes solutions, so we don't need to uh, configure uh, Kubernetes via Ansible or anything. But we are mainly using it for uh, the template for creating the Helm releases, Helm files, which which is get, gets deployed via the GitOps, and that's where we have the version management uh, via Git. Uh, and GitOps, uh, so you can, uh, because we're using GitOps, you can have different branches uh, for different Kubernetes deployment and different uh, environments uh, on the same Git, uh, Git uh, uh, repository. Yeah, so that's, that's the overview. Um, next slide. Yeah, so now we have 
the setting up of the fabric network using bevel as a demonstration or uh, I, I mean this was supposed to be a workshop uh, so I'm not sure if people have come ready for the for the workshop or is it going to be more of a demonstration Can we do some kind of hand raising yeah, here? Yeah, hi, uh, Suji. Yeah, hello. Hi, Suji. Uh, I have a quick question. Yes, please. Hello. Yeah, I have a quick question. Uh, with respect to the previous slide on the architecture, so uh, instead of using uh, uh, you know managed kubernetes if we could uh, i mean if the self managed kubernetes could provide the more uh, uh, you know uh, powerful options to uh, go ahead i mean uh, implement the solution so how how different uh, so will it be will it be more advantage to use self managed kubernetes so instead of a managed kubernetes so could you please put more light on that yeah uh, so shonak was actually taking these slides so i'll let shonak uh, reply that yeah so if you go back on there yeah so i'll i'll answer that uh, so self managed i i mean i don't think from a bevel point of view for, or from a dlt point of view uh, it it doesn't matter if you're using a self managed kubernetes or or a managed kubernetes uh, i don't see there is a positive or negative it will depend on your uh, you know uh, the company's policies or your client's policies if they want to use um, uh, self managed kubernetes and they have people to manage the kubernetes then then fine yeah i don't think there is any advantage or disadvantage in using a self managed kubernetes the only difference that you would uh, notice when and that's with any kubernetes even if you move from aws to google um, that uh, the change that you will need to do on bevel side is add the correct uh, storage class uh, so that uh, the pvcs uh, or you know persistent volumes are getting created correctly sure okay. thank you yeah Okay, we have another question about alternative tools like Argo CD, etc. Yes, why not? I mean, Jenkins and GitHub Actions is not a part of Bevel. Uh, it's, it's an example that we provide uh, that uh, that is there for someone who wants to automate the whole solution. Uh, is uh, the release management and all? Is those are examples? I mean, GitHub Actions we use for ourselves, like for Bevel as an open source project. Uh, not it is not. Uh, uh, if you are someone is using Bevel, they don't have to use GitHub Actions. They can just run it manually. Um, so there is, yeah, you can always use Argo CD or anything, any other, uh, or even GitLab or something to automate. We have also, in from our experience, we have even used AWS uh, DevOps tools and Azure DevOps tools to uh, automate the whole process because at uh, Bevel from Bevel side, it's it's more mainly running Ansible commands. Um, I think people are still asking the questions here, but I'll, I'll answer it uh, before moving on. Uh, so Bevel, how is Bevel different from Fabric Operator? I don't understand the question because are we talking about fa Bevel Fabric Operator Fabric or any other Fabric Operator? Because if the question is that, then Fabric Operator, Bevel Fabric Operator Fabric is part of Bevel. It's, uh, it's just that we are not have integrated yet. Uh, but in general, I think... Uh, if Subhajit, you can post the blog post about the differences. Um, but in summary, Bevel, uh, the one that originally was uh, was created for for more production uh, solutions because it is production worthy, and uh, and you you just run it using the con configuration management and GitOps. It all comes with it. Uh, even the HashiCorp Vault, you need HashiCorp Vault to use Bevel, so the security and all is integrated in it. Uh, but when you're using uh, Bevel Operator Fabric, you have to run it yourself. Will and think that's uh, that's part of the second part of this demonstration or or workshop, uh, which where David Behavo uh, Behavo will will uh, will explain what is Bevel Operator Fabric. Uh, then I think I'll 
close the questions with another two second ones. Uh, so external chain code is there currently uh, uh, on HLF we use it. Yeah, external chain code example is there uh, now, uh, which is uh, released last sprint, right, uh, Subhajit? Yep. Uh, that uh, it is available on the develop branch. It has not been yet merged and released to the main, but it is there available on the develop branch. Uh, documentation for hosting on Google Cloud. So the storage configuration, all the storage configurations are there. Uh, you have to, yeah, it's there under the storage class. Uh, so we don't do the separate documentation for Google and Azure and AWS. It is all generic. Uh, so that's that's all. All right. Uh, Sharak, I think uh, you should uh, we should continue with the demonstration. I'll try to answer on the chat. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I mean, it's, it's better, as I said, we better to move on. I'm just checking YouTube. No, there's no questions there. Uh, before, better to move on to the uh, Discord channel, uh, but uh, anyways, I'll share my screen. So can we... Uh... Hello, sorry. Is there any uh, plan to uh, integrate Hyper, uh, Firefly? to the integration layer. Uh, so what do you mean by integration of Firefly? Oh, can this, can, be, can, be, can it be integrated with Firefly? No, I mean, what do you want to do? What is the end goal of that? Okay, uh, it's uh, for the installation and, uh, you know, Firefly provides the integration of chain codes with external applications. Can you hear me? All right. I mean, uh, I have. Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. So we don't have any plans right now, but yeah, if if there is enough interest, you can create an issue. And uh, we have a lot, we have a, a bigger community nowadays. So if uh, people have interest, uh, they can pick up the stories and work on them. Right. Okay, uh, so uh, from the demo point of view, uh, right, so we are not from uh, from demo, we are not creating a, a separate uh, network or uh, sorry, a Kubernetes now. So if whoever is uh, working on, uh, if your guys are working on, uh, you want to do it along with me, uh, then you will have to, uh, you know, uh, have your own Kubernetes. Uh, is is anyone here who is actually ready for the workshop, uh, which we have Kubernetes installed? Or uh, Kubernetes uh, ready? No. All right. Uh, now, if this is happening, then I cannot see. Okay. Uh, so, if people are creating the cluster, uh, Subhajit, uh, can you share the proxy network uh, YAML on the on the Git um, Discord channel? Yep, uh, I have shared it. Um, it's it's uh, okay. with the name of network .yaml. Uh, It's in the Bevel Workshop channel. Yeah, we can install uh, install the vault as well if needed. So, but uh, I'll I'll start with with the description first. So, as we had talked about, uh, I can I can give you a brief overview of how how this works on the bevel. So, I have the 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 bevel uh, as I have uh, 
cloned it, uh, like did clone Bevel. I've, it's just that it's named as Bab Demo, my older. It's from old uh, project for the demos. Uh, so I have cloned it and I am here as well. So Git uh, remote, uh, sorry, uh, mm, yeah, Git branch. I am on Fabric branch. So this is the latest that I've cloned from, from uh, develop. But if you, uh, if you want to work on main, that is fine. So you can do Git checkout uh, main and then clone, clone from here. And what I have done is I have done Git checkout develop. And then I have cloned from from develop to a new branch called Fabric because this example is for Fabric. So yeah, I'll check it out again. All right, I'll give you an example. Uh, the the structure is uh, folder structure is uh, I mean can be a little bit confusing because we have so many uh, platforms. So we, we actually have substrate now as well as an example substrate. Uh, but uh, yeah, so the make all the code uh, are are under platform for each of these different platforms. Uh, but uh, shared is a common platform, so this this part uh, is is used by all the platforms. So we we'll mainly work on the shared code, and then uh, we have a sample network schema which provides uh, sorry a network validation schema which uh, which uh, helps to validate the network so that you enter the values correctly. Uh, and then you have all the platforms here like Besu, Fabric, Indy, Corum, Corda, and Corda Enterprise and Substrate. We're working on Fabric. So we'll work on the Fabric now. Uh, fabric has these kind of folders. So you have the charts, which has all the Helm charts. Then configuration contains all the playbooks and roles uh, because we are using Ansible. Uh, images is kind of empty, but in general, wherever there would be custom Docker images uh, containers required, then the Docker files will be in these images folder. Uh, releases is where uh, the releases will go because it's we're using GitOps. And then scripts, here are some sample scripts uh, for, for all the crypto generation and all that, but then we have the uh, for the external chain code, we have the chain code uh, server and peer chain code uh, certificate generation scripts here. So basically any script, uh, shell scripts that you will need uh, for, for that particular platform, platform will be in here. I'll explain uh, the uh, proxy, uh, the network YAML, which is the configuration file, which we are talking about. Uh, so if we go to configuration, then the, all the playbooks are here. Uh, so the operation operators will be using just the playbook at this when they are specifically working upon Hyperledger Fabric. Uh, but uh, in general, uh, for the shared, which is the common playbooks, we go to shared and these playbooks. So these are the common playbooks. Like you have all the requirements or all the setting of the environments or validating the schema. And our will be. Uh, we generally all our documentation refer to this site.yaml playbook, which which is kind of like a, like the main playbook. But within Fabric also, you have uh, additional sub playbooks. Like you want to add a new peer, you want to add CLI specific CLI, you want to deploy just the Fabric console. You you have as I said, you have the external chain code. Uh, um, so these are the separate playbooks that we provided. But we'll be mainly using uh, that now. Playbooks need an input. Uh, which is the network file, which is we call network YAML or the configuration file. So we have the network uh, for this demo or workshop. We're using this uh, and I think Subhijit has provided a one, a better one, uh, but I'll explain it um, in any ways regardless. Uh, so we have uh, all all uh, networks in fab Hyperledger Bevel has a similar looking network uh, uh, YAML. Uh, and they are all in these configuration samples. And you can see there are so many different samples for Fabric because Fabric is the most used platform uh, for uh, for uh, Bevel. And we have a lot of different examples uh, like how to do this and how to do that uh, kind of examples here. Uh, so we've moved on from Kafka and we're only supporting Raft nowadays. So uh, now, so our, apologies for interrupting, but I see a request in the chat. Could, is it possible to increase the font size? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do that. Yeah, I didn't see that because. Is this better?
I hope this yeah, is that person who, yeah it looks bigger yes thanks yeah all right uh yeah so yeah i didn't uh, so this it then i like, will minimize this so it's easier to see so yeah under samples you have all these examples as i was talking about you you uh, because fabric supports uh, most uh, more operations than any other uh, platform right now uh, because uh, Fabric is the most used uh, platform for Bevel. Uh, so mm, you have different samples uh, for others also. There are minimum samples, but generally everyone will have a made network YAML. So I'll explain the network YAML now. Uh, right. Uh, so all networks, it starts with network. So if you click on this, it's, it's a network. And then under that, you have the type, which because you're deploying fabric is fabric, it's for Corda, it's Corda. For Besu, it's Besu. Then you would give the version, which is uh, the, we're still working on, We I think 2.5, uh, we just started a spike this sprint, uh, but yep. uh, we, uh, we all, all this is currently tested on 2.2.2 because that was the previous LTS. Uh, then we have an environment section, which is mainly like a common environment. Uh, a common section for all the environments. Then we have a Docker section, uh, where which is mainly uh, used when you have a private Docker uh, images. Uh, I, I mean, if you're not using private Docker, you can actually uh, comment this out uh, and or not use the username password. Uh, then you have the consensus part, which is basically for uh, fabric. Uh, we uh, we have the raft here because we're using raft. Then we have the order section uh, where this is for common, uh, again, a common section for all the all organizations within the fab within the fabric network. Uh, so you have orderer and then it has uh, the order name and then the organization name and what is the URI and all. So in this example, I will be using a local or a proxy as none. Uh, that's why the org organization name has a local name. And then environment type is basically, it just creates a tag for the Flux deployment. Uh, if you have multiple uh, deployments, you must generally encouraged, uh, it's not in place, you must use a different tag for each of the environments. Uh, these are, this is the retry count, uh, which uh, is basically, uh, within X, uh, within Ansible, we check if the network is up, uh, you know, has reached a certain state. Uh, so it retries for this much. So if you basically have a slower network, uh, it is higher number. Uh, if you if you require, if your network is fast enough, I think twenty also is fine. Uh, we are not using a proxy. That is why we don't need to have external DNS. If we had external DNS, it will automatically update the external DNS paths, etc. Any additional annotations can be provided here in this example. This for this is an empty annotation, but this is like a valid annotation. So any annotation for the service, you can add additional label names and labels. Uh, same for the deployment or or the PVCs. Okay, so you have yeah. So only the the only thing is that um, I have the V two here, the old one. Uh, so the original one which we generally use for for uh, for an uh, for cross cluster deployments. So that's when uh, the proxy is proxy HA proxy. We don't actually have ambassador. We had problems with ambassador uh, for fabric. Uh, that is why we never uh, used ambassador. So you can use HA proxy, but in this case we are using none because it will be local. We are deploying it only in one cluster. We are not using multiple clusters. Uh, right. So, yeah, so that is why, uh, because we are doing local, the URI is local, uh, order one, whatever supply chain and the port number uh, for uh, for public or for user using HA proxy, you use your uh, fully FQDN uh, with, an, uh, say, 443 or HTTPS or 8443. Uh, then we have the channel configuration. So you can provide multiple channels here. Uh, in this example, there is only one channel called all channel. Uh, then any chain code for that channel you can provide here. Uh, whatever orderers are part of this channel is here, which is basically the organization name of the orderer. And then all the participants of the channel. Then you will also have the endorsers uh, for the channel, uh, and uh, this is all details are there. We're not going into like 
complete detail for each of them, but I'm just saying, uh, pointing out uh, to what are the examples, uh, sorry, what are the key main things here. Uh, and then you will have you'll provide the genesis name uh, again, which is a unique name for a different group uh, for, for that particular channel. Then comes the section of the organizations. Now, uh, Bevel uh, is, is designed so that uh, one originally designed is production worthy and all. Uh, so uh, originally designed that only one organization is part of one Kubernetes cluster. Uh, for another Kubernetes cluster, you will use another organization, right? Or you will use another, another Kubernetes cluster for a new organization. Uh, but in all the, of course, when we do deployments or examples, uh, you cannot have multiple organizations, uh, sorry, Kubernetes clusters for different, uh, uh, for a small example. So we are using a single, uh, I mean, in the same cluster itself, all the organizations, but in general, organizations are like uh, how uh, Fabric does the members, right? So those are the members. So in, in this example, we have the first organization, which is an orderer organization. Uh, that is why the type is orderer. And then all the details of the CA server and the you know your AWS keys, etc., will you have to provide. Uh, then the Kubernetes section, you have to provide the Kubernetes uh, config file, which the uh, you use to connect to the kubectl. Then you provide the vault where all the secrets will be stored. And then we have the GitOps section. Uh, where all the uh, Git details or the details are there. I think most of us is, is quite, uh, we have, you have used and I, we are using it. It's uh, create, yeah, you can update it. Uh, it's already provided all the examples. Then you under that, under after the GitOps. Uh, so this is again per organization. Each organization has a similar concept uh, or, or sa same keys. Uh, after that, then you have the services where you have the uh, CA and, and then the orderers. So this is for the order, order organization. Now, if we go to uh, the manufacturer, which is a, a member organization or a peer organization, uh, then of course the CA and these details are common. Uh, then uh, only difference you can see is that you have the users, you can add, uh, Bevel will generate a user one automatically. So if this section is missing, even then you will, you will generate a user one. Uh, but if you want to add more new users, you can add here. And then you can give the, all the revoker and what else endorser, those kind of attributes uh, via this attributes channel, uh, sorry, attributes key. So you can uh, add more, uh, more users for your application. Uh, then you can you have the CA service because each organization has a fabric CA. And then after that, you have the peers. Uh, in this example, we have only one peer, but you can add multiple peers uh, with just adding here. So in each peer, you have, of course, the peer type as anchor or non-anchor. Uh, the gossip peer address in this case, uh, they are the same. But if it were there were two peers, then, of course, you will have like peer one here in this case as the gossip peer address. Um, or if you have multiple peers, you can have another peer in the gossip peer address. Uh, then the peer address is its own address. Then this is the certificate, which is the peers, uh, certif peers public key, basically. Then we have the CLI part, which is enabled or disabled. It will create a CLI. Then we recently released the Cactus Connector, so you can do enabled. The main uh, main um, playbook will not deploy the Cactus Connector. Uh, there is a separate uh, playbook for deploying the Cactus Connector. Then all the ports, you define all the ports. Uh, so mainly these are the used. Uh, this REST server and Express API, these are part of the uh, application deployment. So it is here just as an example. After that, you can pass the chain codes. So uh, you can pass, now you can pass multiple chain codes. Earlier we used to support only one chain code, uh, but now you can pass multiple chain codes uh, as, as an array like this. Uh, so in this example, we are passing this chain code and all the details are here, like how to uh, how to do the uh, chain codes. Then I think the metrics were enabled recently. So uh, this will enable the matrix uh, server. Same for the final third organization. Yeah, just, uh, you know, different uh, uh, names and the certificate paths and all are different, but otherwise it's, it's generally uh, the same kind of configuration. 
So that's about the network ML. Uh, we do have a lot of questions, I think. Any specific question, Subhajit, uh, that we need to answer? Yeah, there was a question around can uh, Bevel deploy orgs per cluster? So um, I think there's a confusion here. Um, so just to clear the confusion, you can configure the organizations to be on uh, different clusters. That's what uh, should be suggested and is suggested for production architecture where uh, each organization kind of ha has its own cluster. But as Shanak was mentioning for test environments or for a quick development, you can have all the organizations uh, kind of be deployed on, on a single cluster. Yeah, so uh, yeah, to to uh, you know zoom in on that, how we will do that is via this section. Uh, each organization has a KHS section, uh, and of course, each or if you are using AWS, each organization has a different AWS uh, section. So if you're using AWS keys and uh, values, uh, then you can give the AWS details for the different or, uh, organization to be different for each. And then under the KTS section, you will have the different region and different context of the cluster and the different config file. It will not be the same home bevel config. Or even if it is the same config, the cluster will be different because you will have uh, the different uh, context in, in, the, in that same uh, config file. So that is how you can deploy uh, same uh, from one uh, source. So from this machine, for example, to multiple clusters. But the main prerequisite to there is that you should have access to all the clusters from this machine, from wherever you are deploying Bevel uh, or using Bevel. <clears throat> yeah, one quick uh, clarification, uh, so when we say like uh, multiple organizations in uh, different clusters, so the data distribution will be happening uh, within those organizations, right? With respect to the architecture, yes. uh, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 And, I mean, and of course, in that case, yeah. you should be you you should you will not be, if you if you use these kind of uh, uh, URIs, it is not going to work uh, because it is on different clusters, and these are local cluster uh, URIs, right? So you will you will use uh, these kind of method where you you own the domain called blockchaincloudpoc.com and then you have created proper paths or DNS routes so that your orderer one dot org one ambassador is correctly uh, pointing. Yeah, yeah, yes, of course. When we say organization, we should have the domain uh, address. Yeah. Yes, correct. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Yeah, okay, I see some few questions. It's, I don't know why the chat window is so small for me. Okay, I can increase it now. Yeah, uh, can Bevel, so there was a question about, uh, can we have only uh, organization with both? Yes, we can. And uh, that is where uh, you have this branch uh, where you should be, I mean, that branch is actually not kept updated because we don't, I think we, it adds unnecessary confusion, but you can use the code from this mixed organization branch. Uh, as you can see, it was last March on nine, uh, November 9. So you can use this, this branch uh, to, uh, to when you are using uh, both peers and orderers from the same organization. Okay. Uh, network architecture, I'm not entirely sure what uh, what a network architecture would look like because it is just generic example. Uh, can Bevel use existing organization as an organization in the config so it doesn't deploy it? Uh, no, so we uh, we don't do uh, hybrid uh, existing organization deployment, so you have to deploy it using bevel because uh if you have existing organization do you have everything in the vault and all that because uh, all the other operations will need the uh, values uh, or the certificates to be there in vault like for example you want to add a new uh, chain code so it will try to uh, up get the uh, chain the user certificates or the admin certificates from that particular vault so if you don't have that already it's not going to work. So I, I don't think existing organization 
as an organization in the config and then running other operations, I don't think it's going to work. We, we have not tested, it may work, but you have to put all the things correctly in the vault. Uh, ports on the gRPC defaults, yeah, you can modify. I mean, uh, if I go back on this, I mean, that's the whole point of, of this file uh, is, is if you want to change all these ports uh, to 70, whatever, uh, or 9592, or uh, yeah, so that, that you can modify and uh, uh, bevel will work. Just ensure that it is, uh, you have changed everywhere uh, because this is a local example, right? So you can you uh, have to modify all the paths correctly for for a different port yeah i'll i'll show how the uh, secrets are managed i will show that uh, anything uh, so yeah so generally secrets are managed i would say is is via vault so all the secrets uh, you will need the vault url and the vault root token uh, it will be passed here. Just another important thing, uh, because you will have different a lot of secrets in this file. It you are not going to check in this file. Please, uh, you whenever you are using this file or you know updating this file, put it in a folder called build or put it outside of of Bevel uh, folder or in this case my Bav demo folder, uh, so that it doesn't get accidentally checked in. Uh, ideally, it should be it should be in yeah as I said it should be inside a build folder, uh, which you just create like mkdir build and and put that there, and then once you uh, run it or if you want to change it yeah, uh, you can have a separate for example a private repository if you want to store your uh, network uh, configurations and share it with with your team members, but it should not never be a public uh, repository. Uh, so the final question before we move on to vault, uh, Subhajit, in the meantime, do you want to do the vault deployment? Um, on I, one cluster, basically. I don't have those ready, Shanak. I think uh, if you see the Hyperledger fabric uh, demo from the... Uh, you you want me to do the... Uh the bevel setup uh the, the vault setup on the on our cluster is it yeah 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 okay so just give me a minute i need to set that up so from the um, hlf uh, the global forum okay yeah the links are there yeah right so in I'll... the meantime i answered yeah. the questions uh can other hyperledger tools like caliper or explorer be connected and launched by bevel uh i mean it's I'm not sure uh, what uh, what is the goal here, uh, but uh, if if you want to, it can be. It is not there supported now, as uh, as we kind of trying to mention. Uh, Bevel is a deployment tool. It deploys. Uh, we have added other features, of course, but the main main goal of Bevel is to deploy, uh, make it simpler for you to uh, get your DLT network up and running, be it Fabric or Pesu or Quorum. Uh, what is the max cluster organization it can support? Uh, I would say uh, 10. We have not tested beyond because it will take long time uh, or or I don't think it will be uh, suitable for, for test cases as well. Uh, so it is, it, I would say 10 um, for now because it takes, of course, it will take a long time to run and all that. Uh, any other question that I have missed? Oh, uh, there was a question, where is the fabric branch in this repository? There is no fabric branch in the repository. You have to create the branch. So uh, because uh, you want to keep your deployment separate from the developed branch, uh, that is why you just create the branch like git checkout minus B uh, fabric. That's all you have to do. Uh, can you just work with an external DNS and connect with a gateway for an end user application? Uh, uh, yes. So uh, you, if you have a separate way to connect uh, or expo expose your applications, that's fine. Yeah. So you don't have to uh, make the whole fabric network as, as a public network, right? If you're running the whole fabric network only in a single Kubernetes cluster, 
then it's fair you you can just uh, uh, expose the application you know either the api uh, or the rest server or or the front end for example uh, or via any other method that you want to expose it uh, to through uh, but uh, yeah within uh, if you if if you are not deploying anything separately uh, like in a different uh, environment then uh, cluster then it is no no need to use an external dns or or ha proxy Okay, uh, there's a question about how latency between uh, clusters is handled uh, as latency is one key concern. Uh, so again, cluster latency, cluster communication that is out of scope of Bevel. We, we could be with the cluster itself is, is a prerequisite uh, to Bevel. <laughs> so you, you can't, uh, uh, we, Bevel cannot guarantee if the cluster is connected or not. It will try to. And if it is not working or if it takes longer time, yeah, you can. I think there are some parameters in the fabric REST server uh, that you can modify uh, for uh, for that connection parameters. But otherwise, you know, Bevel is deploying the DLT network. So uh, with respect to on this context, uh, uh, Sona, uh, so uh, going beyond, you know, when we increase the organizations or clusters, so this could uh, be a, a performance hindrance. Or do you think that? Because we, we are all using the managed Kubernetes, no? I mean, mm -hmm. that... so yeah. So if you're a... using a managed Kubernetes, the communication between the managed Kubernetes is is is, is kind of that responsibility falls under that purview. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Eduardo, your question that external DNS, if you're planning to have various organizations in different clusters, yes, that is right. So you will need to have external DNS and, and a domain a DNS, you know, uh, configured so that uh, two, for example, peer one in cluster one can talk to peer one in cluster two from a different organization. Yes, so you will need the external DNS. Can we distribute orderers between clusters using Bevel? Uh, going back again to the new, the other branch that we showed you. Yeah, if you're using the mixed organization branch, uh, then you can have uh, you can have uh, uh, each each or each organization can have uh, orders. It's orderer and peers, not just orderer and peers. So or peers, so you can have both. Uh, in that case, you can have distribute the orderers between different clusters using bevel or you have multiple orderer scenario bevel also supports multiple orderers you know multiple orderer organizations as well yeah going back to the question about how many minimum orders so this is an example uh, that is why we use only one raft orderer but ideally, as all with all raft examples, uh, it says uh, for for cons uh, consistency or I don't know what it's called. I forget the term. But you need two n plus one. <laughs> so basically, if you want to work with uh, one failure, I think you need three cluster uh, three orders in the raft. So if you if you need more, you can or or it should ideally be odd number of orders. Uh, that's that's all I know. Uh, so this example is is. Well, it's basically for a multi, even in our local examples, which is in the, if, you, if I show the fabric V2, which is our main external example that we use, we use three orders. And I think keeping the time into consideration, I'm ready with the vault demo. Uh, yeah, so that? yeah, let's start that. Okay, all right, I'll share my screen. So guys, whoever is kind of uh, don't have vault, you can follow this example that uh, Suvajit is going to show uh, to, to deploy vault on the cluster itself. I hope whoever is following has the cluster. 
let me know if you guys are able to see my uh, VS code. I think you need to increase the font size uh, by hitting Control plus or Shift plus. Does this increase the size? Did it? No, I think. Does see for me, but yeah. Mm. I don't see it here. So the Control Shift Plus. Yeah. Got yeah. It now. now it's fine. Another one, I think. Right, so if you guys have the Discord channel uh, open, um, I'm going to share the link. So we'll start with um, adding the uh, Helm repo. So we'll be using the um, Helm repo for HashiCorp Vault. And um, let me just put the link here. So the command is helm repo add hashicorp uh, and then um, the the link to the repository itself. Um, once that's once the repo is added, you can um, just quickly check um, the various. Um, you can search the repo to list out all the um, vault releases that are under it using the helm command helm search repo and then. Um, the the uh, basically the repo uh, uh, helm uh, name that that you have for that repository. And for the purpose of the demo, we'd be using the chart version, which is um, zero point one three point zero. Um, and once you have added the repo and then you have figured out uh, that, and you can see that this particular release is there, um, you need a override file um, to kind of override the default values of the Helm chart provided by HashiCorp Vault. Um, so you can create a file called override.yaml, uh, which would look similar to what I have here on the screen. Um, in order to kind of make uh, the UI enabled for uh, for your vault, uh, you'll pass a value called UI and then enable it. We'll also use the service type as load balancer so that it is kind of um, uh, externally exposed. Um, and then the uh, basically the port uh, on which you want to run the uh, run the load balancer and. Uh, the vault comes default with some of the uh, agent injectors and all, which is not required by uh, us. So uh, you can add this particular value, which is index injector uh, enabled as false. Right. Um, and then uh, deploying this is quite simple. You we just simply run the um, the Helm installation command um which is can you paste this in the in the chat okay i think it was there before no it wasn't oh it's there yeah actually it is there <laughs> so, yeah it's it scroll up a bit uh in that yeah. the injector thing is not there but yeah, not there uh, okay maybe just add this yeah yeah kind of adding it there yeah so for anyone who is a bit confused, so you can just create a file called override YAML inside build directory. In this case, we just done it is build infra then override YAML. So you can just write, I create it in under build directory so that it doesn't get checked in because there's no point. Yeah. Yep. So once you're ready with the file, we are ready to uh, install the Helm. So um, Helm chart before that, um, we, you can create a separate um, namespace for your vault uh, to run. So you do it simply by creating, running this kubectl command, which is kubectl create. Uh, NS stands for namespace and the name of the uh, namespace we, we wanted to have uh, the namespace name as vault. Um, 
So it, it now has created the namespace. Now we simply run the uh, Helm installation command, which is um, um, so there's a question about what how to get the list of the version binaries, right? So what was that previous command, so it the Helm search uh, repo search, yeah. right? Yeah, Helm search yeah. repo, and I'll, I'll paste it this as well. Yes, and then finally the installation command, which is helm install. Uh, the installation name would be vault. And uh, this is the uh, helm chart that we have added. So that's the mention of that. And then the namespace on which we want to have the installation. Uh, the namespace that we created is vault. Uh, the version is the choice of version that we picked from here when we did the search. And then finally, we have to add the override file to override the default values of the uh, Vault Helm chart. So we provide the path to our file, which is build infra for my case. And the name of the file is override the YAML. I'm gonna paste this before I run. Um, yeah, just uh, for everyone's, uh, you know, this is an example of Vault deployment. Uh, for production use cases, uh, of course, uh, you will uh, use more uh, secure ways of deploying Vault. Yeah, sorry, Subhijit. Yep. An no example. What? What? Um, what example of um, what ways is uh, production steps uh, in deploying Vault? So production steps for security, you you can use the use uh, a, a console model where you will have multiple vaults. You can have Vault in high availability mode. Uh, you can have Vault uh, be in a private, uh, you know, not in the cluster itself. Uh, you can have Vault as as a separate running as a separate VM in your private. Name, uh, namespace not private subnets uh, and and uh, then you can use it uh, you know within from within the kubernetes cluster so those are a few ways of deploying more production oriented vault you can seal unseal uh, sorry seal and all with with um, uh, with different keys even with cloud uh, uh, you know cloud secret keys and all that Right, so the um, installation uh, is successful. It is deployed. You can just check it using the uh, kubectl get pods command, and you can see that there's a vault uh, pod running. Um, you can also check uh, the Kubernetes services using the kubectl get svc command. Uh, svc stands for service, po stands for pod, and the namespace as vault. Um, so you'll see that. Um, the vault ui service is created with with the service type as load balancer and aws which is the underlying cloud provider in my case has created an external ip to access this particular vault and which is actually running on the port which is provided here which is 2001 so i'm going to use this url to access the vault i have to stop sharing and uh, reshare my browser Yep, so I'll use the uh, external IP that uh, AWS has created for me and use the port. So this lets me access the Vault UI. So since this is the first time I have created, so it will do the uh, initialization steps. Uh, you can also use Vault CLI uh, to, to do these steps, but if you have an UI, then it's, it becomes much easier. So for, for the example, I'm just gonna add one key share and one key threshold. So this is uh, this would be used to kind of, uh, when your vault gets uh, un, um, uh, sealed basically, you can use these key shares to, to un, uh, unseal it. 
So this gives me with uh, the uh, initial root token and also the key, which is will be used to uh, see uh, unseal the vault when when it uh, gets sealed. So you should be keeping these two uh, keys uh, safe. So I'll download it. And then let me just keep it copied in a notepad for now. Right, and then I continue to unseal it with the uh, key that was uh, given in the previous screen. So after unseal, I can now use the root token to um, sign into the vault. So once sign in, you can now uh, start using the the vault. Uh, one of the prerequisite of um, of having vault and running Bevel is to have a uh, unsealed vault and have a secret engine uh, created. So we'll use a um, KV secret engine um, to to kind of store our secrets for for the network. So you can create a secret engine using the the button here. So enable secret engine. Uh, it would be a key type of key, uh, key value, and then uh, you can just name it as uh, let's say for our example we have used secrets v2. So let me just name it. But you can name it uh, anything you want. But then make sure that you have the same path uh, in your network YAML file under your vault section. So uh, you have to take care of that. So once done, then you have your um, your uh, secrets created, secret engine created uh, with the sig name secrets v2. Right, and um, now now that you have your um, vault URL, uh, your root token, you can use those and the name of the secret engine in your network YAML files organization vault section. And uh, once you've done that, uh, I think we are ready to uh, proceed yeah. further. So Subhijit, can you share the vault URL and the secret to me? Because that's the only thing I'll change. Okay. Um, I'll share it on Discord. No, no, so just on to me on chat. Okay. No, I'm I'm just saying that. Are you on Discord? On via Discord, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. Fine. And I'll stop sharing now. Oh, I don't have the share button. The share uh, screen button? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can. Yeah. My docking. Right. So once you have that, you will update. Uh, just chat. Yeah, uh, you will update uh, the vault URL in your vault uh, dot URL section in the network proxy. 
sorry, ne in your network YAML, and then the root token, and uh, then this path, uh, because Shuvajit has created secrets v2, I'm also using secrets uh, v2, but if you have created something different, you can that use that. Uh, then comes, I'll just explain what is it, the GitOps section, which will be same for you uh, mostly. Uh, so you we can use HTTPS or, or Git protocol as SSH. So let's use HTTPS. Uh, in that case, your Git URL will be HTTPS, github.com, then your username, basically your fork uh, bevel uh, name. Then this branch, uh, yeah, actually I'm using Fabric, so you can change it to uh, fabric um, then the release directory um, i explained uh, earlier uh, so that uh, you can use this as the releases directory so this is platform cyberledger fabric releases dev you can use any other um, name here as well uh, chart source will be, you can keep it same, uh, no need to change this. Uh, Git repo is basically the shorter version of this. I, I think we can figure out how to make the same, but yeah, it's, it's still like this. So you can use github.com. That uh, Then this is your GitHub username and uh, then replace all of this Git access token with the password uh, or uh, don't use password, use an access token uh, so that you can deactivate uh, after uh, the deployment is complete or or in case it you can change it later email is your git email and uh, because you are using https uh, this private key uh, doesn't matter uh, but if you are using ssh uh, then you will provide the private key for the ssh uh, connection uh, and in that case uh, this uh, path will also be ssh and it will be like a little different yeah, so once that is done, so I have already have a local network, local kind of YAML created. Uh, so I'll, I'll use that uh, because it has all my AWS uh, access keys and also I'm not going to show it, uh, <laughs> share it here, but I'll use that internally. So once that is done, so you go back to your uh, terminal uh, and then uh, just run Ansible playbook, then platforms uh, shared, configuration, then site.yaml, and then pass uh, minus E as an extra parameter, which is minus E. Then in my case, I'm passing build network local. Uh, you have to put add the rate because it should read it as a file. So uh, add the rate build network local.yaml. So that's the single command that we use uh, it does a lot of things uh, so once the people are here i think it's time uh, we can move on uh, to uh, david uh, we about showing how the fabric operator works but this is the command that you'll use and once i click press enter it will do all the steps it will kind of check all the prerequisites and it will check all the uh, uh, it will install the deployments of uh, uh, anything vault say vault cli for example and then it will deploy uh, it will start doing all the different stages we'll come back to it later towards the end of the uh, of this uh, but this is the command that you should be using so the there was a question where i updated the uri is is here in the vault uh, vault section vault url is the new vault uri and then the root token is the root token uh, and if you have used uh, secrets if you have used anything else other than secrets v2 as the new key kv then use update that here so in the vault section if you just search with vault no. So that's it. Right. I think it's time uh, over to David. And David, do you want me to share my screen for the deck? Hi, David, are you there?
Yeah, we're not hearing you, David, if you're speaking. Sorry, now? Can you hear me? Yep. Ah, uh, yeah. Hello. Okay, perfect. Uh, we'll cut the, yeah. the microphone off. So, so, so is it you can share the, yeah. the deck? No, again, I, I will... What I was saying before is uh, that I will share my screen because uh, okay. I've already uh, updated the presentation in order to ask to answer so, some of the questions that were asked before about the versions of the, the changes, mm -hmm. etc. So we'll share the screen. Let me okay. know and you can see it. But this basically is more or less what the the, the base the presentation that we did on January this year which was a full workshop of uh, two hours and a half. And uh, but in, in order to understand uh, what is variable operator fabric, we need to understand what is a Kubernetes operator, what is the goal. So the goal of a Kubernetes operator is to automate the deployment of an application. So if you if we look into the fabric samples, uh, for example, uh, here, there is an example on how to deploy in Kubernetes, but this, if we check the configuration and the, the QF uh, jammer, this is too static. And, the, and there is a large jammer about this. So uh, it, it is hard to run dynamic networks using this approach. So this is where the operator uh, aut automates all of these parts, uh, all of this creation of of these uh, resources in Kubernetes, the certificates, the config maps, uh, the deployment. So it, uh, it will abstract you from the actual deployment of the of the Hyperlay Fabric Network. So first thing, uh, the Velo Operator Fabric is a declarative way of creating Hyperlay Fabric components. This includes the PR, the orderer, chain code, channel. Channel is more logical, but uh, it's also supported in the in the in the operator. Also in the version 1.9, there is the possibility to create identities, which uh, is a way to enroll the user and get the certificate approved kit in order to use it in applications that connect to the chain code. This is this uh, Kubernetes operator, obviously, is based on Kubernetes. Uh, you can deploy Kubernetes on premise on, or on cloud. Uh, in all of the projects that we have done, we have worked on cloud because uh, managing a Kubernetes cluster, unless you're a big company, uh, it's not uh, really uh, something that brings much value. And it's customizable uh, for specific use cases, for example, for certificate renewal, which is already supported. There is a, an alpha feature, which is the automatic certificate renewal, which uh, one month or 15 days before it can renew your, the certificates for your peers and your orders. So this is also something, some feature that was asked a lot before. And uh, what is supported apart from the Hyper Library components? So uh, I saw a question before in the chat about the, if external chain code is supported. External chain code is supported in, in Bevel Operator Fabric, the creation of components, and also the channel configuration as a code. This is a really useful feature because one of the hardest tasks in a HPLA fabric network is to manage the governance. And the, and the governance and the, and the configuration of the channel, for example, how many transactions you want in a block, what are the organizations that will belong to the network, what are the consenters. So we have a, a resource that we will see in the next screen, which is, uh, Channel, conf channel configuration, which there are two parts. There is the founder of the channel, which is the organization that manages and runs the channel, and there are the, fo there are the followers, which are the organization that uh, join the channel. And the uh, versions 2.3, 2.5, 2.5 .5 are supported right now. In fact, this, uh, this demo will be based on, on the latest version, Hyperlay Fabric 2.5.3 which I think it was released like two weeks ago or something like that. I don't know if there is any question. I'm not reading the chat right now, so please, Sona, can uh, let me know if there is an important question uh, to clarify. 
Yeah, yeah, I'll, there is no no questions yet. Yeah. Okay. If I if I'm speaking too fast, let me know. Yeah. Because... Okay. Yeah, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so uh, you you said your yeah, external chain tool is supported. Um, assuming we have, and I know that uh, Bevel supports multiple chain codes. What's if we have a new chain code to be deployed and installed? Um, yeah, how, 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 how does it support it? New yeah, chain code yeah. deployment and uh, installation. It supports new chain codes, but the uh, deployment of the chain code is not if. Uh, the task is not just to deploy it in Kubernetes, so there needs to be a uh, chain code approval, chain code commit. So there are operations involved in the hyperledger or the network. But yeah, this is supported and this is something that we will see in the demo because we will deploy a, a two organization, two peer organization, each with two peers, and then an order organization with three orderers. So, and then we will create a channel between these organizations and deploy a chain code. So this is support. And the chain code is, is uh, deployed in Kubernetes. So if you have, uh, we will show how to deploy a chain code and how to approve it and how to install it and how to commit it, then you can take this example and then uh, polish it for your use case, in this case. Not sure if it answers the question. What is the repo for the level operator? I think it's this one. Level supports maximum. I will bring up the chat. I don't know if you can see it. Support maximum. Okay, so I think there is a operator. question. Before Let me go back. Uh, yeah, so the bevel operator. When do you use Bevel and when do you use Bevel Operator Fabric? Yeah, versus Operations Console. That that is a good question. Uh, that's right. So as we, I kind of explained, uh, Bevel, uh, the pure Bevel, it was was designed for more production systems. So we'll use that. At some point, uh, one of the uh, we'll be using Bevel. We'll also be using Bevel Operator Fabric to deploy. So until that comes, there is uh, these are two separate kind of deployment method methodologies. Uh, but uh, we we are uh, working on uh, to so that you know we run the same Ansible command and internally Bevel will use the Bevel operator fabric, and that will happen for all the other platforms as well. So we'll we'll create a uh, again here every, anyone who is interested to lead the way to uh, Bevel operator Coda or a Bevel operator Quorum, uh, please feel free to get in touch. So basically, at that point, Bevel will use the GitOps operator for production-oriented workloads, and will use the Fab Bevel Fabric operator or Bevel operator Fabric for more CPUC or even production operator. You, you can choose what you want to use. You want to use the GitOps operator, or you want to use the Bevel operator Fabric, and that's that's the main difference. So it's basically not uh, not a great dip a difference. Uh, there is a UI console in uh, Bevel Operator Fabric, and uh, there is also Fabric Operations Console, uh, which is provided by Fabric, uh, which you can use to deploy, uh, which adds like you can use to uh, create the channels uh, and all that, right? Which which is managed by Fabric team. Yeah, there's a similar one. Yeah. In the, in the so and Bevel, fabric. you can use Bevel right now to deploy the de operations console as well, and and also get all the chain channel assets that you need to basically manage, uh, add the keys to the wallet and all that. So that's possible via Bevel. Uh, you use the same UI, which is the operations console. Uh, there was a question about fabric. Uh, so Bevel supports two point two, but Bevel, yeah. So there is another thing. If you want to use uh, exit like two point three or four, you can use Bevel Operator Fabric. But in general, if you are not using any uh, new features of Bevel, fa sorry, Fabric two point five or anything, then if you just update that uh, top section of two, where I have placed two point two point two to two point four point two, uh, it will work. Um, yeah. Yeah, but so the channel participation is not supported in in Bevel, I think. And uh, sorry, the, you said, can you can you hear me well? Mm -hmm. Or, no, okay. Okay. Be, be, uh, Bevel 
doesn't support the channel participation API right now, I think. Or the yeah, channel it, management. it supports. You can you can do both uh, channel management separate addition of a new channel and addition yeah. of members. Yeah, it does the approval and all that as well. So that the channel uh, configuration as is is same. You, you know, in your case, yeah, you are using as a code. In our case, it will be in the network YAML as a configuration. Yeah, that's the but, only difference. But, but, but not with the channel participation API. Not with the API itself. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. And about the user interface, uh, the operator fabric has an explorer tailored for fabric. Yeah. But it's the yeah, it's only read only. We, we will show it at the, at the end of the demo, so we can see it later. Mm, I don't know if you want to continue. Uh, yeah, please continue. Yeah, can we have a copy of the deck? Yes, uh, we will send it afterwards. Mm, or maybe I can answer this. By the way, uh, we'll... yeah. I will say it read only. So uh, just to continue, the developer of fabric resources that are supported, so there are two parts, the physical and the logical part. The physical uh, has the PR, the order, certificate authority, chain code operator UI and the fabric operations console, which uh, was a project which was donated by IBM in order to manage the network. And the logical resources, uh, the fabric main channel, the fabric follower channel, uh, which is used for organization to join a channel that has already been created, but by, by, by some organization. And uh, more logical resources, which uh, were added in the latest version 1.9 are the fabric identity and the fabric network config the fabric identity enrolls the user and also manage the certificate renewal which is something that is uh, is uh, also is most likely a problem in the projects after uh, one year then certificates start to expire so with this you ensure that the identity that you will use in order to run the application as an expire. And the Fabric Network Config, which automates the creation of a network con configuration for your application. E in taking into consideration all the peers and, and all the orders that are in your cluster. So these are the logical resources which we would use after the physical resources are set up. And uh, the next slide, Level operator fabric CRTs and resources. So we have the the KubeCTL plugin, which we will use. This is our developer machine, and we have the Kubernetes cluster. You can use whatever Kubernetes cluster that you want. So in this in this demo, we're going to use Kind, which uh, we will have locally, but you can use AWS, Azure, uh, whatever cloud provider that, that you want. And this QCTL uh, will create the CRDs that uh, will be created, uh, installed in the health chart of the HLF operator. And then these CRDs will be then taken, uh, be taken from the HLF operator. And then the HLF operator will create the peers, the orders, fabric CAs, will update the channel, uh, will manage the channel configuration for uh, the channel that we will create update the channel for the peer organization, including the, the anchor peers, and sorry, and uh, also deploy the visualization CRDs, which are the operator API, the operator UI, and the fabric operations console. So this is the role of the operator. At the end, it abstracts the creation of these entities that we see here. And the main difference between Bevel and Bevel operator fabric is that Bevel focuses on more networks, such as uh, Corda, the one that uh, Sonak said before, Corda, Indy, and there are more blockchain networks. And Bevel Operator Fabric only focuses on uh, Fabric, and it uh, has tons of functionality, functionality for, for running Hyperlite Fabric networks. And uh, that's it. So for the demo i don't know so next if you want to uh, me to continue to, to the demo or, or you want to continue but yeah yeah for please the demo, continue 
yeah yeah please continue uh, no, on, on that we, we will need yeah. we, we will need the uh, uh, to know what basic cryptography uh, what is a certificate what is a, a, a public key a private key uh, basic knowledge about kubernetes and docker when i say docker i say container d so con a container technology to know what is a container uh, in order to run the api you will need node.js with typescript and then basic knowledge about cell commands uh, in that case i will use macm1 so if you have macm1 uh, it will run more than fine and basic networking concepts because we will use a, a, a local DNS. So we will need to know what uh, basic networking in order to know and uh, be able to troubleshoot problems in the future. And the goal of this workshop is to create a Hyperlite fabric network of of two organizations, two peer organizations. Each peer organization will have uh, its two peers and a chain code. And then uh, there will be an order organization which will have three orders. And then the demo organization, uh, the, the demo channel, sorry, a demo channel will be created between these three organizations. The order organization will manage the consensus and the peers will manage the endorsement of the transactions. And then the API, the client will send uh, the transactions to the to the ordinary service. So, if there is if there are no questions, I will proceed to uh, to the demo. So, if you want to ask any questions, now is your time. Don't think there are any What's questions. Okay. That's good. Yep. So. Oh, sorry. There anyone... was a question. Uh, is Fabric main channel and Fabric follower channel different from channel in Hyperledger Fabric? Is Fabric main channel is different from? Uh, no. Fabric main channel, and and this is. Uh, closely tied to the governance and you may want to use another way uh, for your use case but the, the idea of the fabric main channel is that usually the in the real projects there is one organization that has the knowledge about hyperlay fabric and that organization ends up managing the channel managing the channel means who joins an organization who leaves what is the configuration of the channel uh, Etc. So, the fabric main channel usually has the a list of consenters, which are the ones that manage the consensus, and the, the fabric follower channel are for the organization that they know another organization that manages a channel, a channel, and they just want to be part as a peer organization of the channel. That is the goal. But at the end, uh, everything is uh, is a channel in Hyperledger fabric. So. Uh, there is no difference. It's just uh, that one creates the channel, and the other joins the peer, the peers to the channel. That's that's the only difference. I don't know if that answers the questions. Okay. So we will push the new. Yes, it seems like a logical definition and some sort of difference. The one is for the peer organization, and which is the fabric follower channel, and fabric main channel is to create the channel. So let's start now that we have seen. So you can follow this demo using the, the GitHub repository. I will have some here. This is the one that uh, we will follow the readme for this. 
So, uh, first thing that we will need, and this is something that I already created uh, in order to speed up the demo, is the Kubernetes cluster. So, we have already a Kubernetes cluster, which I can show here. This is the Kubernetes cluster. I did the test just before, so well, we have here some fabric follower definitions in the left. Uh, there is a power in my channel, which I will delete in order to start from scratch and in order to not have any problem. So we don't have any more resources, which is good. And we have a, an empty Kubernetes uh, cluster right now. So, okay. so this step, you can run it on your own. Uh, you can also provision another uh, cluster in another cloud, such as Amazon AWS, but you will need to be careful with the, in this case, uh, with the DNS, because there is a slide here, the local DNS architecture, which is, uh, I think is nice to, to see before actually going into the, into the demo, because usually we have a, a domain name such as, uh, I don't know, hyperlayer.org or uh, something that can be accessed uh, from the exterior. And uh, in this case, since we're in local, since we're in local, we're going to use the local host ST, which uh, is a DNS that just resolves to the loopback uh, IP address, which is 126, uh, 001. Will access the, the Hyperlay Fabric Network. So, if we want to run it in Amazon or uh, uh, in Amazon or, uh, or, or, or Google Cloud, you will need to change this DNS and you need to make sure that this DNS resolves to the service of Istio in this case. So, that will be the, the change. So uh, having said this, so the first, the next step that we need to do is to add the repository for the Helm chart. Uh, this we have done already and install uh, the shelf operator, the version 1.9.0. In this case, I have already installed it and I'm not going to restore it so I can, but uh, if you go through this step, then a different message will appear and the operator will be installed and then the shelf operator controller manager will be created here. And then the other dependency that we have is the kubectl plugin, which will be the client that we will use in order to create peers, create orders, create certificate authorities, and uh, in interact basically with the Kubernetes in order to create the custom resources definition. But uh, so in order to do that, we will need to install Crew. And uh, so when you have followed this step, which uh, is just to go here, and then uh, depending on your operating system, then execute the command. So for macOS, if you're on macOS or Linux, then you just execute this command and then add the path. This, uh, you need to add this environment variable to the busrc or set shrc, and then you're ready to go. And uh, restart your cell. And after that, you can just install the QCTL plugin just like this. So this has been installed. So this is uh, right now we have kubectl, hlf, so we can get the help of the kubectl hlf plugin, which has all of these commands. We're not going to use all of them, but uh, it may be good for you to, to revisit this. 
So after installing the QCTL plugin, which this is a, a QCTL plugin that is installed in the development machine, is not installed in the cluster, we need to install Istio. Uh, you can just download Istio with this command, which will create a folder, Istio 1.16.1, in this folder. And uh, then you just export the path in order to add the uh, Istio binaries, in order to, to be able to install Istio into a Kubernetes cluster. And then step after this, we should have Istio CTL uh, with all of the commands. The ones that we will use is operator init, which will create the operator. This I have already run, so make sure that you run it. I also created the uh, Istio system. This is this is what is called in Kubernetes middleware. So these are general components that need to be installed uh, for the for the SLF network to to work. And you can have Istio also. Uh, being used by other applications, not just a HPLA fabric. So you will need to install this operator, uh, this, this CRD for Istio, install.istio.io uh, with these components, with the ingress gateway, one replica. These are the resources, this is the service. Uh, so the, this is basically the properties for the Istio operator. And then after this is installed, which we have already installed, if we see in the, in the Kubernetes cluster, uh, we check the install.istio.io, CRD, Istio Gateway. This is healthy already. And what this will deploy uh, is if we go to the pod, we, this will install uh, an Istio Ingress Gateway, which will be the one that will serve the, the request. After this is installed, we can start to create the, the peer organizations. So actually this, uh, this difference is for the worst of the worst done in, in January, but we can just remove that because the images are the same because now Fabric supports ARM, ARM. So we, we don't need to have uh, different images. Then we can just export them here and uh, this is important also configure internal dns so this internal dns is basically for uh, if we look in this screen so the core dns that we see here needs to be modified and this we do it by modifying the modifying the config map so that when it it asks in the in the cluster for localhost.st, it doesn't go to localhost because localhost will be the, the current pod and the current container. It will go to the Istio ingress gateway. So that will be the that will be the difference. That is why we need to configure the internal DNS. If you don't do this step, then uh, nothing will work basically because the operator will not be able to contact the the fabric CA in order to enroll the users. Uh, so this is really, really important. And this is the cluster IP, which is a, an internal one. Okay, we have a question. Does Bevel use a proxy and Bevel operator uses Istio? Any plans for Bevel operator to support a proxy or Kubernetes gateway API? In fact, mm, now that you mentioned this, if we go to the documentation, there was a pull request by, I think it was this guy, uh, Rohit, which introduced the Gateway API. So you have here in the documentation how to get started with the Gateway API, and there is a way to use traffic, and there is a way also to use Istio using the Quantas Gateway API. So yeah, it's supported. I don't, I'm not sure so much about the uh, Bevel, but yeah, the operator fabric, the, the Gateway API is supported, but uh, not used in this demo, because Istio is way easier. 
at the moment yeah so going back on that uh, bevel supports ha proxy uh, so when bevel will use bevel operator to do then i can we'll have to uh, see how it works with the ha proxy uh, but yeah, right now Bevel, uh, the fabric operator, Bevel operator fabric uses Istio. Yeah, and as as yeah. Yeah, but it can also use uh, uh, traffic or yeah, any traffic. Mm -hmm. uh, That's a recent change, right? The any any load balancer, any load balancer that uses the gateway API for Kubernetes. So uh, for the DNS, we need to configure this. Uh, this IP is the one from the network. Uh, this is the ingress gateway, which has the 10, 96, 24, 71. This is a cluster IP. And uh, so what, what will happen is that for any local host.st, it will be related, related to host internal ingress. And uh, this will be redirected to the cluster IP of the uh, Istio ingress gateway. So that is why we need this YAML. So we just configure it. In my case, it's unchanged because I configured it early. So right now, uh, what we need to do is deploy the organizations. So we have here the first step is deploy a certificate of authority for the organization one. The second step is deploy the two peers for organization one. And the third and fourth step is just to do the same for the organization two. Then the five, the fifth step is to deploy the other organization. And then we will create the channel. Then the organization one will join the uh, peer, the, their peers to the channel. Then the organization two will do the same. Okay, we'll increase the font size. Yeah, David, yeah. Uh, yep, better. Then uh, we will install the chain code, which we will need to prepare uh, the connection a string for the PR, create the metadata file, prepare the connection file. This is for the external chain code. Then build the chain code Docker image. This is optional because there is one provided out of the box but if you want to configure in order to run your own chain code then this is needed and uh, we have two options one for a arm and the other for regular amd64 then if uh, you build a uh, uh, local image you need to push it for the uh, to add container registry that is accessible by the Kubernetes cluster. It doesn't necessarily need to be a, a public container registry. Then we will deploy the chain code uh, here using this command, using the external chain code, which will uh, create, will deploy the chain code in the Kubernetes cluster. Then some checks, approval of the chain code, committing, and then we we'll do do two in, in this case, two instructions, and then we will launch the Explorer in order to see the peers and the orders and the channels that have been deployed, as well as some blocks. So this is the uh, a quick walkthrough through what we will do, and everything is uh, in commands, everything is in, in cells, in cell script. So we will start by deploying the certificate authority. There's a new question. Can Bevel or Operator Fabric be used for a new node to an existing channel or HLF network? Yeah, I mean, you can create the, the physical nodes using Bevel or Operator Fabric and then join them to the channel. So, yeah, that's possible. Yeah, so, so if you are using Bevel or not using Bevel, uh, you can still create and then join both both so using either using bevel or using bevel operator 
fabric. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great. So we will start by creating the CA. Then we will run this command. In order to be uh, faster, I will create the three CAs at the same time because I think we will be very, very tight on time. So we, uh, we will create the uh, CA for the second organization using this command. The, the commands are very, very similar for the three organizations. We will, in the, in the meantime, while they are going to be deployed, we will review. Uh, but basically, we are specifying the CA image, which uh, we have exported before. This is a version, the stress class, but this is, a, this is the one that can support the capacity for the, uh, for the storage of fabric CA, the name, the enroll ID, which you can change, the enroll, the enroll password, you can also change the host, this is for Istio, Istio, and then the port, which we have configured. This port is the same, uh, is the external one. So uh, since right now we have configured the external port as 443, then we will stick to that. And uh, this command, uh, if you are running it, running this in a cell script, then you want to wait until all of the fabric CAs are uh, in the concession running. And then since we have created the three at the same time, all of these are, uh, the condition is met. And in order to visualize the, the Kubernetes cluster, I usually use Lens, which I highly recommend. So if we go to the pods, then we will see the three CAs being uh, deployed right now. And in order to verify if these are uh, deployed, then we can run this command using the localhost.st. Since this is a worker domain that would put uh, the org one to, uh, the CA with the port, and this will return a JSON of the, in this case, the, of the CA name with the CA chain. So this is the certificate of authority certificate that was generated by the, by the operator. Then we will register a user for the peers that will be deployed in this organization. This is uh, this register takes the name of the of the certificate authority that will be used the user and the secret. This is the user and the password that will be uh, created. The type of the user. This is very important. We're creating a user for the peer. This user for the peer will not use in order to submit transactions from an API. This is really really important. And then the the credentials in order to be able to register this user this user which are the ones that we specify while creating the Fabric Certificate Authority and the MSP ID, which is the organization one MSP. Then we will run this command. Identity PR is already registered because I already registered. Uh, so this is uh, something that uh, if this is your first time, uh, it will not be this error. And then we will create the peers. So we will create two peers same time uh, and then in order to go faster we will deploy also the two peers for the organization two which is the same command we will try to register the organization uh, two user for the peers this will in this case this has been registered yeah well, identity PR is already registered okay mm. Deploy the two peers, then we will run these commands. This will deploy the two peers zero and the two peer one. And then uh, after you have uh, deployed the peers, you just run this command, the kubectl wait, which waits for, will wait for all of the peers to be in the condition running. And in the meantime, you can also see it on the, on the uh, lens in order to visualize the peers being created. If uh, your connectivity is good, then this will take one minute, two minutes maximum. It will also depend in the resources that you have in, in your PC. In this case, I'm running in a Mac Studio of uh, 128 gigabytes of RAM and many 
CPU core, so it's uh, very, very fast. As you saw in 20, 30 seconds, we have a, a PS running. So these PS have already been created. Uh, we can verify this in care, uh, randomly one. This will give this error. This means that the uh, PR is responding. If we do this for the PR1, it will be the same error, but this means that there is connectivity. PR0 or 1, same error. PR0 or 2, same error. If we want to go, if we check this against a PR that doesn't exist, then we, this will give this error, which means that uh, is going nowhere. So Istio doesn't have a way in order to route this to, to appear. And uh, right now, the only physical resource that we need to deploy, apart from the chain code, is the orderer nodes, are the orderer nodes. So in this case, we have already created the CA. Uh, we need to register the orderer. This is the same as we did uh, with the PR, but the type instead of PR uh, is orderer. And we have the role ID, everything is the same. Order ID and the MSP ID is different. And we will create three orderer nodes, which this is the closest that we can get to a production network. Although in a production network, I highly recommend to run five orderer nodes uh, because you will have uh, more, more room in case two order nodes crashes or something happens, then you will have uh, three order nodes left, which will be more than enough in order to run the consensus and to be able to, to store logs. In the case of three orders, if two of them go down, then the network will not be useful. So we will create the three orders. We will wait until these are created. And then we will go to lens in order to visualize the order has been created. Yeah, I know this has been created. The three at the same time. This will take some time, maybe a minute or two. We can go to the pods. This is running already. Yeah, everything is green, and a few seconds, then this command will return that the order is running. If there is any question in the meantime, feel free to. To, to ask it. There is a lot of, I mean, you, you, you will need to, to do this a lot of time so you, if you are new to, to Fabric in order to understand all the pieces and all of the all of the components to be able to deploy this stack ne a network in another cloud provider. I don't know what. Was on this one. Mm, I don't know. But apparently, the I don't know what why it failed, but apparently, this. Okay, there is a question yeah. Is Bevel being used in any production environment? Um, I'm sure yes. And I'm sure there are there are members from those organizations which are who are in this call. Uh, so yeah, Bevel has been used and being used in production environments. Uh, the que second question, I guess, is for operator fabric, right? Uh, is there a plan to integrate with Vault for certificates and other secrets? So that's for you, David. The right now, no, because there has not been any any request, and um, it will increase the complexity of setting up a Hyperledger fabric network, which is one of the main concerns of the project. So. The main question that we're trying to solve is how to, do we spin up a replay fabric in a fast uh, and easy way. 
certificates are already handled by Kubernetes, so every secret is stored in Kubernetes, uh, as, as well as uh, some, so it's the same way as when you deploy Postgres, so you store this in the secret the, yeah. the password of Postgres. So maybe in the future. Yes. Uh, yeah. So the, I'll, I'll just the summarize on the, on that one. Yeah. So Corey, I mean, if you want it to be supported, maybe you can create an issue on on the channel on the thing. But as as David said, uh, the main uh, uh, problem that uh, fab operator fabric is is solving is how fast you can do it. Uh, rather than adding more complexity uh, but yeah if you want that you can always use uh, use uh, and you know bevel which has support for vault but as i was saying earlier at some point uh, we'll integrate uh, bevel and bevel operator fabric so bevel will use bevel operator fabric but you will have the options to use uh, you know the original bevel or the operator fabric in which case the original bevel will give you a more production worthy uh, where you have vault and all that uh, secrets uh, you know all secrets are managed by vault where or if you are using operator fabric then the secrets are managed in kubernetes so that is another main difference between them so uh, the in bevel all the secrets are stored in vault so in even if you can you migrate your uh, kubernetes uh, or even, even if your kubernetes shuts down you can actually it's easier to get back to it uh but with uh with the operator fabric because everything is inside kubernetes so you'll have to manage the backups uh properly mm. right so there was another question i thought we can use ansible playbook to instance it away so that's that if you're using ansible playbook uh that's for the bevel setup this is how you're using the operator fabric uh to you to set up a fabric network so those are the two different ways of doing it yeah. and the the reason that what you say the chill of confuse over the test yes uh, it's because uh, this was the original company that uh, developed this i'm part of that so uh, it's really hard to change the, the crds if someone knows then uh, please create a pull request but uh, it's really hard to change the the CRD names. Uh, okay, so is that the CRD name now? Uh, no, the CRD name it... no, is the I think is the IP, no, IP version. Yeah, it's the IP version. Ah, okay, so, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. changing this is uh, will be very very hard for because the, the, this project is already been uh, executed by uh, multiple companies in production. So migrating. Uh, Will be very risky. So yeah. Yeah. So is, to uh, provide you the explanation, uh, that uh, KFS originally created this and then they submitted as a hyperledger project. So that is why uh, the API is HLF. Yeah, that's the that's the name of the API. Just like you know, for Kubernetes, you have to so many different APIs. Okay. So. Right now, the status is, if we look at the pictures that we have, so the, the, the goal was to create the, all of the physical components, which right now, except the chain code, we have done. So we have two peers per each peer organization, and we have three orders. But there is no channel yet. So we need to create the channel, and we need to create the identities in order to interact with this channel. And this is what we're going to do right now. So if we see the in lens, then we have here all of the components deployed. There is one pod per component. So we have four peers, these are the four peers, we have three CAs, these are the three CAs, and at the top we have the three order nodes. So this is the status. So uh, now we're going to create the channel, and for this and for the favorite main channel and the favorite follower channel, we need to create identities. So we need to create first the identity for the order of MSP. In this case, there is a, a small difference in the identity created uh, because instead of being the TLSCA and the, uh, instead of being the CA, which is the one that is used in order to submit transaction, in, in case of using the channel participation API, which is the only way that we can create channels in Hyperlay Favorite, then we need to enroll it using the TLSCA. CA. So this is the only difference. 
uh, we can uh, go more in depth after this uh, demo. So we will register the user, the admin, and we will create the identity. And we will do this for each organization. Okay, already exist. Okay, this already exist. Uh, maybe one moment because I ran this workshop before I need to delete the previous identities. Yeah, I need to delete the previous identities. So this will work right now. So first for the order MSP. Yeah, this is already registered because I ran this twice. Then for the first organization and then for the second organization. Okay. And this will create three identities. All of them are running. And what the operator has done right now is to create a secret. And we can see here that there are three secrets from 20 seconds uh, ago. And each of these secrets has a cert pem, a key.pem, which has a private key, a root, uh, the root certificate, and the uh, user jammer, which uh, will be used by the operator in order, in order to perform operations. And we have for organization one and organization, organization two also. And after this, we can check the identities from a line in order to see uh, if the status is running, which is the case. And we can proceed to uh, create the, the main channel. I will highly recommend you to go through each of the properties because uh, we don't have the time to go that in depth. If you want to see it in depth, you have the meetup from January, which will go much, much uh, in depth into Fabric and why there are. Uh, to explain the commands line per line. So feel free to do that. But uh, we will basically get the peer organization sign certificate, the root, the root certificate for, for signing and the root certificates for the for the notes, which is the TLS certificate. And uh, we will also get the certificates for the specific orders. This is for the consensus, for the consenters. So we will export these variables and then we will keep CTL apply this YAML, which uh, this the type of of this uh, of this uh, resource is fabric main channel. The name of the channel is demo. These are the admin order organizations, the admin peer organization. So basically, uh, the channel will be created so that only the signatures from this organization are needed in order to change the configuration or add another. A member to this organization, to this channel, and then the channel config, which has a, a, you can configure the policies, the ACLs. This is not usually the case, but uh, you can look into modifying this, also the capabilities, the and order configuration, such as the vast size, the in this case, the max, the max message count, 120. This means that you can get up until 120 transactions in a block, the batch timeout, which is what, how often uh, there is a block created, etc. And then the peer organizations uh, that, are, that belong to the channel and the identities in order to perform the operation of creating the channel and managing the channel. Then the order organizations, uh, which has half the order in order to be able to join them to the channel. And then the orders, which are the consents, the consenters. And this is why we need the TLS certificate for the for this consenter. If we have five, then we can just uh, create two orders more and then add them here. So let's create this. If there is any specific question, feel free to go to the to the repository and then uh, raise a question uh, in the chat, and we can we can answer it later. Basically, we create the CRD and we can check if the channel has been created using this command. So this is running, so this means that the uh, channel has been created and the orders have been joined to the network. But no peers are yet part of the of the channel. And we can see here created block five. So this means that uh, this is uh, this is working. 
And uh, what we will do after this is join the organization one to the channel. The same, we will need the one order TL certificate in order to trust the order in order to fetch the block uh, to join the, the peers to the channel. We will create a fabric follower channel for the organization one. These are the anchor peers. This is the identity that will be used. Uh, if, we, if you remember the identity that we created is the using the fabric identity has this name or one does admin and this is the user jammed that uh, we said that we will need that for the operator in order to join uh, the peers to the channel. So we will create this and we will do the same for the organization too. This is something, this uh, jammels, this is something that you can have in Argo CD, you can have in uh, any uh, GitOps uh, system that you that you want to use. This doesn't necessarily need to be uh, QCTL. Just then we have created the the fabric follower channel for organization two, and then we can see that both of them are running. And in order to verify that both of them are running, then we will go to lens and we will see the logs of one PR randomly. Then we will see that there are blocks here and uh, belonging to the demo channel. So this looks good. So right now uh, we will we need to prepare the connection stream for the peer, and we as we have already the identities, we can create a fabric network config that uh, the operator will use this spec in order to create a valid network config to be used by the QCTL plugin or by any application that you want to develop, for example, Node.js, Go, Java, etc. So we will create this public network config. Uh, we can see some properties here, such as the channels, the identities to be added to the network config, if this is internal or not. This is for the endpoints. In this case, this is not internal. Then in the spaces that we want to, uh, to, to filter, in this case, we want all of the namespaces to be uh, set to uh, to set in all of the namespaces for peers and orders since we only have one network and the organization that we want to be added and the secret name will be the secret name that will uh, create the operator and we can uh, right after creating this we can see the network config so we can go to lens right after this go to fabric network config this is running and then we can go to the secret and we can see okay let me delete this because this was something from before i don't know if there will be any problem running this in a uh, one test cluster that was used before for a network but by now this is running and then the secrets will be here so this is the network config that we will use if I copy it, well, I, I can copy it and paste it whenever I want. And also I can use this command, which is here. QCTL get secrets, uh, JSON path is data config YAML, and then we will pull it into the resources network YAML folder. And then we can go to the network YAML and we can see the one MSP with the users that were added, certificate, private key, and uh, the peers of the organization. So, so this is a network config that you can use in your application in order to connect to the, to the channel and execute transactions. So right now the status is we have created the peers, the orders, CAs, uh, we have created the channel, we have joined the peers to the channel, uh, configured and called peers uh, for each organization. So right now what we want to do is deploy the chain code in the Kubernetes cluster, install the chain code in each of the peers, approve the chain code for each of the organizations, and commit the chain code. And when this is done, when all of these steps are finished, then we will need to test the chain code. So in, uh, submit a, a transaction and query the, the network in order to, to fetch, to interact basically with the, with the chain code. So this is highly technical, uh, but this is uh, this step is to create the metadata file 
This is for the type of external builder. In this case, we will use the chain code as a, as a service and the label can be whatever you want. We will execute this. Uh, so this will, this will create the metadata JSON and uh, prepare the configuration file. This, we will create the connection JSON. This chain code name uh, and this, this address will be the one that the PS will use in order to connect to the chain code and we will not use TLS in this case. And we will, let's execute this. So based on the connection JSON, we will create a code that they set. This is, uh, this will contain the metadata JSON and the chain code uh, tar, which will contain the connection JSON. So this is uh, a structure that fabric needs in order to install the chain code. And then we can calculate the package ID using a helper function from, from the kubectl plugin. And this it will be the package ID. And then after this, we can uh, install the chain codes in each of the peers. We will need to execute the chain code for uh, four times, one for each peer. And we can run this copying and pasting everything. And then if there is no error, then this means that everything went well. There is a question that uh, Eduardo Vasquez is asking. In the previous workshop, you created the network config file a different way with the CLI. Which way will be better? I recommend now, this is a resource that was added in 1.9. I recommend that you use uh, this CRD because you can automate the creation of the network config uh, using the quantities of the Bevel Operator Fabric, which uh, previously you need to uh, have more tools locally. So this is right now in the place that we're running. This is how we're managing the network config. And this has the, the improvement that this is refreshed every minute, every two minutes. So uh, as the identities are also refreshed, so this ensures that you have a network config with, with valid identities. So the certificates won't expire. So this also has the, the improvement about the, the, the certificate renewal, the automatic certificate renewal. Well, after this answer to, to this question, we have installed the chain code in all of the peers. Then uh, we need to build the image. In this case, since we're running short of, in, of time, uh, the image is already built. These instructions are in case that you want to build your own chain code and then uh, use the chain code in order to uh, deploy it and, and run your own use case. So this is just for reference. This is what I had to run in order to uh, push this image. But this is already in the in the Docker Hub, so no need to, to Docker build to run this Docker build and also no need to run this Docker push command. Now we need to deploy this uh, the chain code in the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, and the, the reason why we have to compute the package ID is because uh, the, the chain code needs to have the package ID for the organization. So we will need to deploy it with the package ID, the replicas, and the name will be the chain code name, which will be asset in this case. And the next space will be default. The image will be the one that will, you will need to change if you want to deploy a custom chain code. So we can go back to lens, to the pods, and we see that the asset is already running. Then we can see in one PR the chain codes that are installed. You can run this for any PR or one PR zero or, or one PR one. So feel free to adjust these scripts uh, as you as you need. Then uh, we will need to put the chain code for the organization one. Since we have two organizations and the majority of organizations need to approve, then we need to approve for both organizations. If we had three organizations, the case that we had, we have three organizations, then at least two will need to approve before committing. So uh, we have approved with the first organization, then let's approve with the second organization. And then this is the transaction. Uh, for the for the approval and then we can commit the endorsement policy is organization one MSP and organization two MSP. 
and then we can just commit. And uh, at this point, the chain, the chain code is uh, committed. We can just uh, interact with the chain code. There are two main functions, uh, chain chain code invoke. This invocation will store a block in the in the GPLF network, and the query will only go to the chain code and gather information without leaving any trail any trace. So uh, when you want to store any information that you need to use invoke, in this case we are initializing the, the ledger the ledger. So uh, since we want this data to be persisted, we need to use invoke. So let's do the invoke. Yeah, this is the transaction ID and then can, then can uh, we can get all of all of the assets that were created. So these are the assets in this case. And uh, in order to see the network, we can uh, deploy the explorer in the in the Kubernetes cluster. The API host will be this one, the operator API localhost.st. This will be the network config that will be used. This will be uh, the visualization mode for the explorer. Uh, the explorer will be visualized based on the policies that the organization one has. The HLF secret key is config.yaml. In the, uh, if, because if we go to the NC network config in the Kubernetes cluster, then we will find that the key is config to jam. And you can create your own secret with your own network config and adjust it as you, as you want. And then the HLF user of this network config for this organization, for the organization 1MSP, is the org1 admin uh, default. So we can just export these variables. And uh, we can create the operator API. This is needed because, uh, in order to reduce the deployment components, because uh, before the, the operator API and the operator UI were needed. So, right now, there is only well, one, uh, one component, which is the operator API that has the website embedded in the, in the in the, in the image. So there is no need to deploy the operator UI because this is already in place. So, mm, okay, one moment, because there is, yeah. There is a problem with the, what the pod labels being added and uh, were required in the kubectl uh, plugin didn't, didn't support that. So we will make a release soon in order to fix this value. So, Right now, the operator API has been created. Let's go to the pods. And right now, we can see that the operator API is running. So we just need to get this host, then go to localhost, and then put operator API localhost.st in HTTP because we don't have any certificate. So this will load the operator API, which we will be able to see the peers, the orderers. The certificate authorities, everything is running. There is basic information if you go to the detail of the of the PR, for example, TLS PR, science PR, spicing 11 months. If you over, then you will be able, uh, I don't think, yeah, you will be able to see the exact time. I don't know if uh, in Zoom you get to see it, but in this case, it's 19th of June of uh, 2024. And uh, I think the the best screen and the, the screen that gives you the status of the network is these channels, which will have the demo, which is the one that we have created. And then uh, here we can see the channel demo with the height, with the peer organization, with the other organization, with the channel peers. Also, uh, we can see the peers of each, the height of each of the peers, which this is really useful in order to see if there is a peer that doesn't have connectivity or uh, or is or has problems in order to catch up with the rest of the peers. And uh, we can see that each of the organization have two peers, one core peers, uh, and the order MSP has uh, three order endpoints. If we, we can go to the detail of the organization one, and uh, we can see the signed certificates, which is by 10 years, and the TLS certificates. These are the root certificates, and also the core peers and the MSP ID. And uh, apart from that, we can see the blocks, which uh, we have multiple types of transactions. The config ones 
are for when we have created the channel and the, there is no transaction data here. And the endorser, the endorser transaction is for when uh, a chain code is invoked. If we go to the latest one, then we will be able to see that uh, this block, the block number 11, uh, we need to understand that the block starts with zero. So even though that we have a height of 12, then the latest block is uh, 11 because, because it, it will start with zero. This is the hash of the block. This is the date where the block was created. And this are, these are all of the keys and values that were created with this transaction. We need to understand that this is a block. So there can be multiple transactions. So we have created as a two, three, four, five, six. And if we go back to the Visual Studio code and we query again the get all assets, let's copy and paste this into Visual Studio code. Then we will see up until the asset, the asset six. And if uh, I do a travel, uh, I do again the init ledger, then I will see another. So the height has been increased to 13. And then I will see another transaction 10 seconds ago. And then I will see the same keys being added. So this is a great way to to see the status and uh, the operations that have been lately uh, produced in the, in the blockchain. So, okay, David, I think we, we have another the, half an hour so we can summarize, uh, but there is a question if you look at it on the on the chat. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, right now, feel free to to go through the, through the readme. This is the end of the tutorial, of the, of the demo. So, there is nothing more, so like, so we can go yeah, yeah. to do the summarization and uh, answer any questions. Yeah, I think uh, there was a question that uh, Jefferson asked about. Uh, there was an issue with the, with the, uh, what was it? Fabric follower plugin. Uh, manually, they have to manually join and define an anchor pair, and then uh, then only it will work. It worked. It seems. Mm, well, without much, inf without any information, it's hard, I think, to. Yeah, to uh, I think the summary it. on that one is that it would be better to test it on on other things other than kind. And secondly, there was a question: is that uh, how to uh, if there was support for migration of data from an existing fabric network, um, like uh, you know from the Docker or middleware, right? That was the question. Mm. The migration is a hard topic, to be honest. Uh, um, yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I would agree. I think uh, from the migration point of view, yeah, someone has to yeah. write code to read those CA values and create the secrets, right? That's, yeah. the, uh, the, that's the basic. Good. The basic answer will be: so, what you want to do is recreate the physical components in the new in the new cluster, mm -hmm. or if you are running yeah. Docker, then create a Kubernetes cluster and create the physical. Uh, Components, the PR are the easiest ones. So you will need to join the peers to the uh, previous channel in order to, for them to catch up. Uh, this will be the first part, but the, uh, the hardest part is, uh, it, it depends on how big is your network. If you have 2 million blocks, then the peers catching up will take lots of time. So okay. this is the hardest part. Yeah. Yeah, and I think there was a question about this uh, README, even on the YouTube channel. I think Eno Dominic is asking the same question. Do you have documentation of how to set up the HLF from start to finish? Is this README on that uh, uh, the, the, repo that you the in the, provided? The, the README is in the repo. So I can yeah. paste it again. So the README is in the repo. Yeah, yeah. we'll paste it again. So what we did is just uh, run through the through the rhythm. Yeah. And you can do it on your own. Uh, any any can do it on your own. Yeah. So you can the next question was can we create fabric entities through UI like CA peer? Uh so I yeah, so the answer to that is no. Uh because uh, yeah, the fabric operator because I mean you can do some operations via fabric operator operations console, uh, but it is not. Uh, it doesn't create, but this UI is is read me only, right, David? The, uh, there is a way, but uh, 
I mean, it was tested a while ago uh, until uh, I revoked. Yeah, I don't think it has idea, been integrated. Yeah. It's here, there are some, but I doubt it will work, to be honest. Mm. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, Actually, I had a look at it, I saw an option there to create, that's why I asked. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, in theory, uh, but uh, it will have lots of problems, and uh, I see problems with the, because it needs lots of configuration. So I think it will be easier for you if you are a developer than just uh, run uh, and configure the channels instead of going through the UI. Maybe oh, you yeah. want to build a UI, a UI on your own, and then no, create actually, this yeah, actually the people you are building they wanted a UI, so we proposed this, but they wanted it to be from UI. So I was exploring this. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. So in summary, you may may try to make it work, uh, but yeah, we we have uh, you know we just we have not tested it's it. It's not hundred percent supported. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how mm -hmm. does the UI get all the network data? There is an API. And this can be secured in using OpenID Connect. There is an yeah. option for the purpose of this demo. We haven't used it, but uh, uh, for the securization of this data, there is an option to to integrate it with OpenID, such as Keycloak, uh, of Zero, uh, Amazon Cognito, whatever you want. Yeah. And uh, it is foreseen to be able to have a console to execute those actions. Well, this is for you, Sobunak, I think. Yeah, I think it's common, uh, and the answer to that is no. Uh, Bevel uh, is mainly aimed at operators uh, who uh, would, or mainly also aimed at automation. So as soon as you keep adding console and UI to it, you cannot, you, you may add more complexity to the automation tools. Uh, so, uh, so to, yeah, so the short answer to that is no. We, we have supported the Fabric Operations Console to some because Fabric already did it. If Fabric uh, Operations Console adds those parameters of creating a peer, etc., uh, then it will be available. But from a Bevel point of view, even from an operator point of view, I'm just uh, putting words in David's mouth. But uh, I, I don't think the focus is on a console, uh, on, on a UI. Uh, because we want, as you saw, saw all the Davis commands were from from backend, you know, from a bash shell. Even my commands are from, from Bevel. You use bash shell, which is basically what uh, operators would use, like to use, and it is also much easier to automate them because you can just write a script which will run at whatever time. Yeah, yeah. rather than sitting on you know teaching someone how to uh, browse this console. Yeah. Okay. So I'll I'll get back the screen share. Uh, so just to show you what happened on my side. We'll open the chat open separately. Uh, right. So yeah, so here is if you see that my deployment has completed. I'll show the lens uh, as well. Uh, I did not uh, add any uh, uh, chain code or anything. But just to overview on this. Shanak, just to, uh, sorry to interrupt. I don't think we are able to see your screen. Uh, David, you might have to stop share. Oh, is it? Okay. Uh, right now, I'm, uh, I stop. I think by now you can see. So oh, yeah. Now screen, you can right? see. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. So if you if we start from this point, so uh, yeah, from the vault, yeah. So this was the vault that uh, Subhajit deployed, which was running. And after that, uh, these are the components of the, the Flux controller. So Flux, again, uh, as you we heard about an operator. Uh, so yeah, Flux, Flux installs a lot of different operators. So same thing has happened here. So we have different operators which are running. And then uh, gradually the, the Bevel uh, systems start running. So we first have the Vault Kubernetes job. So that the main purpose of this job is to create the connection between Kubernetes and Vault uh, so that you can uh, talk to Kubernetes, uh, talk from Kubernetes to Vault and vice versa. Okay, because Vault is supposed to be secure and, and uh, you, you, not everyone should have access to Vault, right? After that, you have the CA certificates so because we are deploying the CA uh, CAs. Uh, so you we create a job which will create the CA certificates. So that job then stores the certificates into the vault. 
then the CA servers are running. So these are the servers, as you see, they're green. So that means they're running. And then we have the CA tools. So basically this is the, uh, uh, like the pod we are, we are providing, which does all the crypto generation using all the commands uh, that you would use. Uh, so all the certificates, uh, the reg user registration, similar to what, what David showed with, with the uh, kubectl HLF commands. So you do the user registration and all, and then, then all the, the only difference in this case is that all the CA tool is once they, the certificates get generated, they get, again, they get stored into vault. Uh, so if you delete them, that's also fine. And this point, I just added another uh, uh, AWS node. Uh, but yeah, again, yeah, then after that, it's just the peers that have started running. Uh, so peer uh, manufacturer supply chain, which is the orderer and, and the carrier's peer. And then once uh, that is, once the peer started running, then we, we have the channel creation. And as David kind of said, like we have the main person, main organization, which creates the channel. Uh, so, for example, in this this uh, scenario, carrier uh, net created the channel, and then they both joined the channel through these jobs. So these are jobs uh, which which run, and then we also had peer CLI for manufacturer as true enable. So the peer CLI was installed, and then we have the anchor peer setup. So basically, that means the anchor peer was added. So if you see the logs from the orderer and all that, so here yeah, you can see that. The all channel was added here. Uh, I mean, and this this error is because uh, the joiners were not added. But uh, yeah, you can see that the all channel added this, and then on the peer zero. Uh, so for, so this is for carrier. Uh, so after the anchor peers were added, uh, then the man membership view on the all channel was changed, and it was it was able to know that there is another peer called manufacturer net on the on the channel and uh, similar will be the uh, the log on manufacturer yeah so if you see the same thing and then manufacturer can see the other peer which is peer zero so that's the summary um, and then if i trying to see if there's any answer no question here no uh, going back to uh, what all things, other things you can do via Bevel uh, with Fabric is, is, is here. So you can upgrade the Fabric version. You can upgrade a running Fabric from 1.4x to 2.2x. Uh, you can add a new organization. Uh, you can add a new orderer organization if you want to uh, you know, add a separate Kubernetes cluster with the orderer organization. You can create new channel, definitely. You can remove an organization, uh, but removing an organization, of course, means you should have agreement with all the other organizations, but the max, I think it's a, it's a vote kind of thing. Uh, then you have a, you can add a new peer to an existing organization. You can add just another raft orderer to an existing organization orderer, uh, just adding the CLI, you can add uh, install chain code basically both uh, 1.4 and 2.2 versions you can upgrade a chain code uh, and then you can as i said you can deploy a fabric operations console you can refresh certificates separately uh, by by one playbook and this i already said you can deploy fabric uh, the cactus connector uh, though the cactus connector itself has a defect so we are not able to successfully test it but you can still deploy uh, a version of a cactus connector and then you can also deploy the external uh, chain code uh, using bevel right so questions what if we had set up hlm with bevel and just install um, yeah, I mean, on this one, I think it will work. David, do you have a different opinion on, on Eno's question? Uh, what other is uh, uh, from the one from Eduardo? You mean? Uh, no, no, yeah, the previous question. What if we had set up a telephone network with Bevel? Can we just install? Uh, the thing is that uh, Bevel operate the fabric, uh, user interface explorer. Uh, you will not be able to see the peers, orders, and CS. You will only be able to see the channel, block, uh, the, the participants of the network, etc. Because this 
part relies on the, other, on the network config. So with Bevel, I think you will be able to create a network config and then just plug it in the in the explorer in order to see the channel data. Of, uh, so the channel data, the blocks, the, the transactions yeah. and everything. So it's possible, but it's not natural, you know. So if you if you want to use the Bevel Operator Fabric UI, then you most likely want to use also the Bevel Operator Fabric. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So and going back, uh, okay, so going to the second question uh, is about the CA server. Yes, it, the Fabric CA server is not supposed to be used for production workloads. So we have not tried ourselves with a generic CA server, which is like provided by AWS or, you know, deploying your own CA server. So basically yeah, the idea is that you should deploy with your own CA server and it should have the MSP kind of configuration. So you can provide the membership uh, memberships. So, you know, create users and, and uh, uh, applications. I think that's, uh, that's the way to do it uh, when you are using for production. Uh, so not aware of uh, this thing, right? So yeah, so if you go to, uh, if I'm opening Vault, uh, yeah, once the Vault is deployed, all the once everything is completed uh, in the secrets V2, and when Subhajit created, this was empty. Now you have all the secrets in order organizations and supply chain. So this is, for example, this is the Genesis block. And then under this, these are the certificate, the CA servers, uh, public, you know, certificate and key. And then you have uh, the users, MSP details, you know, all the admins are, all these are here. So if you want to copy or uh, download uh, for an application, for example, especially the admin user, uh, you can you can use Vault CLI or even Vault API. Vault provides API access as well. Uh, to download these certificates uh, in your application. Yeah, so that's the question in the REST server you can use. I'm sure there will be uh, packages where you can use Vault uh, server and pass the details of this Vault and, and the you know, token as some kind of secret uh, so that it can download these uh, using the APIs. And that's what Bevel also does anyway. So Bevel uh, for all these all these boards uh, which which are running. If you if I do this, so this is the certificates init part. As you can see, uh, it it runs it gets this using the APIs. It calls the Vault APIs uh, to get the set uh, the TLS certificates. Uh, do we have the option to update the certificates that is expired? Yeah, I think uh, David uh, already showed how to do it on Bevel Operator Fabric. And in, in Bevel, uh, it's uh, operations here. Yeah, so refresh certificates in Hyperledger Bevel. So if you if you click on this, you can you can know it's there. There is a separate, basically there is a separate playbook which will refresh the certificates. And backing to back to this uh, using you know your question, I think David answered it uh, that yeah you can do that, but as we already discussed, the UI is not you know hundred percent, and we don't test it as well, uh, so it may may work and may not work as well. So we we don't uh, and uh, we are more focused on providing the CLI uh, versions or working on the CLI versions of both. Uh, both the uh, from Bevel and Operator Fabric. Yeah. I, I pasted the two links, uh, which basically are referencing the Bevel yeah. Operator Yeah, so these two links fabric. are for when, if yeah. you're using Bevel Operator Fabric, uh, this yeah. is how you uh, renew or even set up auto-renewal. Yeah. So the, the, idea, the idea of all of, uh, of Bevel and Bevel Operator Fabric is to set up the network and to run it in autopilot, more or less, so that uh, the maintenance is minimal. minimal. Yeah. So On uh, Fabric 2.5, yeah, I think will be supported uh, in, uh, we have started a spike. Uh, if anyone wants to help here, uh, they can. Uh, but we just started a spike uh, where uh, we want to uh, explore what is Fabric, what are the differences between Fabric 2.2 and 2.5 and 
how it will impact Bevel, and then we'll create the stories uh, for those differences. If there are not major differences, it will be a smaller, it will be earlier uh, available sooner than later. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's all then. Any other questions? Uh, we, we have about, you know, 10, 13 minutes. <clears throat> Oh, uh, going back to the fabric version support for bevel, uh, to we, as I said, keep on saying, uh, that, uh, if you are not using, if there is no major changes, if the generic, I think Fabric is generally backwards compatible. So if you're not using specific features of Fabric 2.4, if you just update that 2.2.2 to 2.4.x, uh, I don't, don't use X yet, um, some real versions, uh, it should work. Yeah. Uh, the recording will is there already there on YouTube, so it, you don't have to wait for the recording. Uh, it's, it's already it will be published as soon as we finish it on on the YouTube channel. Yeah, it's the same link as the live stream. Yeah, it's the same link as the live stream. Uh, is it currently possible to create an infrastructure with three orderers and wrap consensus? Uh, yes, um, uh, not exactly. no raft leader i'm not exactly sure what you mean by uh, that uh, like you can create you i mean you can definitely create three orders with raft consensus i think david showed how to create on on that and and in yeah. bevel you just add uh, in the network yaml uh, add multiple orders in the orders under the order organization most likely the orders cannot uh, i mean this is how a problem in your network so most likely the problems cannot communicate yeah if you're seeing a raft ordering yeah i think mm -hmm. these orderers are not either not communicating with each other uh, so they're not able to uh, select a leader or uh, there is some problem in the sys channel yeah uh, there's a question about Explorer CRD. David, is that is that supported? This was meant to be supported, but uh, the reason why we have the custom explorer for Fabric is because the explorer project, and this is my opinion, is a uh, is great because it's for multiple blockchain networks, but it's not tailored for Fabric. For example, you don't have the option to see the private data in the in the transaction in the explorer uh, which is which many use cases rely on private data so this is something that is not in the block it's in each of the peers and uh, the operator explorer the web operator explorer uh, support that supports also the uh, visualization of the channel as well as the configuration so we uh, in the past we missed a lot of features in the Fabric Explorer, then it went into deprecated. Right now, I think it's in Hyperlayer Labs, and it has been uh, reanimated, I think. So developing, development is taking place. But uh, the, the focus of, of Hyperlayer Explorer is not Fabric, uh, especially. So uh, I don't think that we will support that. But uh, you can always uh, deploy Hyperlayer Explorer on the site, not using the operator. Or you can use the explorer that uh, we provide. All right, I think that's all. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we love the participation and and the questions definitely. Uh, uh, some great questions, but yeah, I know uh, people didn't uh, put on Discord, but you can always come back on Discord. We have those two separate channels and also the workshop channel if you need to uh, need some help on, again on the workshops. 
uh, shop channel uh, please uh, come back there and ask your questions that advantage of course with on asking on discord is that it will be there and you know someone else will have the same question we'll have the answer uh, it's not a video answer or a uh, you know you don't have to wait for the whole video to complete to get an answer uh, but yeah uh, please feel free and please use both of them and uh, as if you as we already said for some of the issues if you think uh, that uh, that any feature would be uh, great uh, for that you can add them as an issue uh, of course we can do the triage if and if we need more details or more uh, you know how to do it we can triage that issue but if if that's also one way of participating in an open source that you can submit a issue it doesn't have to be always code uh, of course, go if you uh, if you already are working on something and you think that is a good fit, you can you can create the issue and then submit the PR as well. So that's uh, that's the best way. Uh, anyways, and yep, yeah, uh, that's all. Thanks. Uh, Great, thanks everyone for joining, and yeah, thanks for running this. And yeah, nice to to have all this information. And as you said, yeah, let's. Meet on Discord if you have any additional questions for for uh, anybody about Bevel. Great, thanks everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, nice day. See you.